Today I'm making a super simple seitan. There's a lot of ways to make seitan. This one is just really easy and is ready to go in 30 minutes. To make this simple seitan recipe, you will need one half cup vital wheat gluten, two tablespoons chickpea flour, three tablespoons apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, one teaspoon of thyme, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of olive oil for pan frying. This is one time I make an exception. You also need about half a cup of veggie broth or bouillon or herbs and spices for simmering. You'll also need a little bit of water, like oh, half a cup or so. I'm just gonna put it to the side for the moment. To make this is super, super simple. You just put everything into the bowl. I love recipes like this. Hold off on the water though. We'll add that a little bit at a time. Okay, so we have everything in here. Now I'm just gonna add, oh, I have roughly a, almost a cup of water. I'm gonna add about half of that to start with because sometimes you need a little more, sometimes a little less, and I'm gonna start mixing it up. It's gonna start forming a thick, paste almost right away and that's that's a good thing that's how it works okay you see this this is too dry there's a lot of dry stuff over here and it's just there's no more liquid in there so we're gonna add some more water not a lot just maybe a tablespoon or two at a time to get it just right usually takes about a half cup maybe a tablespoon more really just want all the dry off of the sides a little on the history of seitan. Seitan is a meat replacement for those on a plant-based diet, and it's made from wheat gluten. The history of seitan's usage dates back 1,500 years in China. Seitan is high in protein, low in fat, and low in carbohydrates. My version here is but one way, as there are thousands of ways to make seitan. This one happens to be ready in 30 minutes, and here's some macros for you guys to see what a serving of this is. This recipe makes two servings, by the way. Okay, this is looking just about perfect. As you can see, there's a little bit stuck to the sides, but I can probably scrape all that off. There's no liquid lying around, and it makes that squishy, sticky sound when you press on it. But it doesn't feel overly wet. That's exactly what we were looking for. By the way, in case you were curious, that used almost exactly half a cup. It's usually about a half a cup and a tablespoon, like I said. Okay, once we get it to this point, now you gotta get your hands dirty. And I'm just gonna get in there and start kneading it by hand. You can do this on the table, except that it does get a little bit sticky sometimes and you might end up adding more ingredients to keep it from sticking. So I like to do this by hand. And what I really do to knead it is I, I do like this. I hold it in my hands, squeeze it in with both sides and kind of push to the surface. See how that broke apart? That's not what you, what you want. So we just keep doing that until it kind of stops breaking. It's almost like when you're making bread and you do the, you're trying to create tension on the surface. It's kind of what I'm doing and I'm just sort of wrapping it around itself. You, you can almost do like just a little bit of squeezing like Play-Doh in the beginning if you really want to because it's not really doing much. What we're doing is building up those gluten strands which is how you get the texture of like a meat-like product. By the way, yes, there's apple cider vinegar in this. The reason is vital wheat gluten has kind of a, a grainy, weird taste sometimes to some people. So adding that apple cider vinegar, the acids in there, neutralize that and they actually cook out. You don't really notice it at all, but it does make a huge difference in the flavors. You can change the herbs and spices and whatever seasonings you want in this, and it comes out a little bit different. This is just a very simple way to make like a chicken or a, almost a pork flavored uh, seitan. As you can see, it's starting to have a little bit of a skin when I stretch it, it's not just breaking apart. I usually take maybe five minutes or so to knead, and I'll just keep doing the fold over and squeeze and pull method. And I'm just stretching it out and trying to work that gluten so that it gives a little more structure. Okay, we're getting close. Now, when I pull it, it doesn't just break, it actually stretches into strands. That's the key right there. That means the gluten is starting to really form nicely, just needs a little bit more. How long? As long as you're really willing to go. The longer you go, the stronger your texture will be, and you'll be a little bit more, maybe firm to the bite. Um, adding a little bit more water makes it more soft. So it comes out kind of like if you've ever had um, in a Chinese restaurant where like the beef and the chicken is just super, super soft. It's because of the way they cook it. If you add a little bit more water, this turns into that. If you make it a little bit drier, it's more like a, a drier, almost like a roast beef that didn't quite have enough au jus. Um, you can kind of get that kind of texture as well. Okay, we're getting really, really close now. So what I want to do is flatten this into a disc and well, I usually just do it right in the bowl. 
just kind of pound on it until it turns into a disc. And then flip it over, treat it like a pizza crust. Just kind of smooth it out. You want to get it down to under an inch thick is my preferred size because it cooks a lot faster. You get more surface to mass ratio and uh, there's more surface area to brown up in the uh, pan fry step. So something like that looks pretty good. It's not gonna be the prettiest thing you've ever made. It, it looks, some people have said it kind of looks like brains. Um, it does have an odd look to it at first. Don't worry, you're on the right track. And that is pretty much what you're looking for when it's ready to be cooked off. Now that brings us to the next step. Next, you'll wanna get a nonstick pan and put it to about medium high heat. Um, I keep it to like six to seven on my particular stovetop, but your mileage may vary there. And in a saucepan where you can put about an inch more liquid than the thickness of your seitan, this is where you wanna put that veggie broth or a bouillon cube, or sometimes I just use various herbs and spices. Like today, I'm actually using a little bit of our veggie broth along with some thyme, some rosemary, and I had a, a powdered um, chicken broth thing that was actually not chicken, it's actually vegan, but it kind of gave the impression of chicken. So I put that in there too, and just bring that up to a light simmer. Once our pan is up to temperature, we're going to add that teaspoon of oil, literally just a little bit. I do use oil for this particular recipe because first, I don't want the seitan to stick. It'll just be a really nasty mess if it sticks. And second, the browning that the oil provides is a really wonderful thing in this seitan. It helps to create a crust, which keeps it from turning bready. It actually keeps it at the size that it is. So this is one of those times I make an exception. And one teaspoon per two people, not really that much oil to worry about. Once the oil is in the pan though, we're gonna grab our seitan and we're gonna drop it in there. You should hear some sizzle as it enters the pan. Okay, I like to use tongs to make sure I can move this around and I'll just kind of press it down a little bit to make sure it's getting really good coverage and just make sure it's not stuck. There we go, it's not stuck at all. That's the crucial thing. And just kind of press it down a little bit, get all that in contact with the pan. And usually three, maybe four, sometimes even five minutes per side, depends on how hot you really have your pan. You're looking for a nice golden brown color, then you're gonna flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so it's been like four minutes. Let's, uh, let's check this out, let's flip it over, take a look. There we go, that's what we're looking for. It looks kind of like a pancake right now, or like a hash brown. And that's pretty much what you want. You want that nice golden brown color, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. Push it down a little bit. Yep, get it in contact with that pan. And that crust is what keeps it from expanding. If you've ever had like a really spongy seitan, that's part of the problem with seitan is it can turn into this weird sponge if it's not cooked exactly right. So doing this really, really helps. And I'm just gonna give that a few minutes and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's flip this over and check out the other side. Oh yeah, nice and golden brown. If it started getting any darker than that, it's a little okay, but you don't wanna go too much further. And now let me just get a good grip on this. Hard to do with just one hand. Don't chase me around the pan. All right, and I'm going to drop it right into our simmering liquid. Now, I just added more water to that, so it's gonna take a little bit for it to come back up to the simmer, but see the, just a little bit of bubbling. That's what we wanna see. Just a touch, you don't want a full boil, but you don't want it to be totally inactive either. And now we set a timer for 20 minutes. At the halfway mark, you wanna flip this over. I'll show you when we get there. All right, so here we are at the 10 minute mark and I just wanna give this a flip. So I'm just gonna grab it carefully, flip it over, try not to splash, that is hot liquid, don't do that. All right, our timer went off, so that means this is done. I have killed the heat and I'm going to pull it out and just let some of that liquid drain off. I did get the pan heated up again, so it's back up to about medium temperature and I'm gonna drop that right into that pan and move it around a little bit. The oil from before is still kind of in there, you know, cause it doesn't really absorb into the seitan quite as much as you might think. And all I'm really doing is crisping up the outside, drying it just a little bit, maybe like a minute on each side, and then we're going to plate. Now, just because you've finished using that broth doesn't mean you should throw it away. You can actually put that through a strainer, put it in a container and keep it in the fridge and you can reuse it for next time you wanna make a seitan. But for right now, I wanna dig into this and see how it tastes. Set 
So here you can really get a good look at that texture and you can see that it looks reasonably meat-like. That's kind of the concept that we're going for. But it doesn't matter what it looks like or the texture if it doesn't taste good. So that's important. And that's why we use those seasonings that we use because if you don't season it, seitan kind of tastes like nothing. It just tastes really bland and doesn't really taste very good. So seasonings are very important. Right off the bat, that tastes like fried chicken. Totally does. The little bit of edge frying really brings together that like kind of cooked flavor. And you can taste just the tiniest hint of all the herbs and the garlic and things coming through, flavoring all of that. I don't taste apple cider vinegar in it at all, but it really does taste like a perfectly seasoned piece of chicken. The texture is actually more like pork though. It's a little more moist and, and chewy than uh, chicken would be. It's not stringy. So it's really more like pork, but either way, it's good. Now that's just eating it plain. The possibilities for this are endless. Pour some gravy over that, you got a Salisbury steak. Bread it, fry it, you can make pork or chicken parmesan. Cut it up, throw it into pasta sauce. Chop it up into little tiny bits and you can make ground meat to put into pasta sauce. You can cut this up and put it into stir fries, into soups, into stews. Anything you would use meat for, you can use this. Oh, and did I mention that it's really, really inexpensive to make? I mean, this is super cheap. I'd have to run the numbers and I might have something down here on how much this actual piece would cost to make. Storage options. You can take it as is, once cooked, and put it in your fridge in a, you know, a container or a zip top bag. And you can leave it in the broth when you do that, or, you know, just a little bit of the broth. You wanted some liquid in there. Keep that for probably about a week. Or you can put them in a bag and freeze them and keep that for months. That way, if you want to make like one big batch and fry up pieces of it and cook it all off, you can make a whole bunch of it and have seitan for months to come. It is a wonderful source of protein, adds a nice, chewy, delicious, meaty bite to dishes. We just really, really like the stuff. Now, if you are gluten sensitive, obviously, this is probably something to steer clear of. But if you're not gluten sensitive, it's actually really good for you to eat gluten, contrary to what some people might have you believe. Do the research on that like I did. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.